Welcome to the Work Camper Show, brought to you by WorkCamper.com. This podcast helps you discover how to finance your RV travel dreams. Each one of our episodes will introduce you to people who are already living the RV lifestyle or to work camping opportunities all around the U.S. You'll also learn how to hit the road the right way and make the most of every opportunity. Now let's turn over today's show to your host, Greg Gerber. Today I will be speaking with a couple who have been RVing for a number of years and worked at several different jobs to support their travel dreams. Today's episode is sponsored by Work Camper News. If you have more questions than answers when it comes to work camping and the RVing lifestyle, then don't worry, Work Camper News has your back. Attend a free monthly work camping Q&A webinar to get your questions answered. Each month, the knowledgeable team behind WorkCamper.com hosts a free live webinar where they can answer questions submitted by folks just like you who are learning about the lifestyle, just getting started, or who've been work camping for a while. They cover topics like what kind of work camping jobs are available, what do those jobs pay, tips for writing a work camper resume, questions to ask an employer, what type of RV is best, how to get your mail as an RVer, and much more. In the description of each video, you'll find a list of questions that are answered so you can quickly jump to the sections you want to hear. Register for the next live webinar at workcamper.com forward slash answers. Or listen to detailed answers now by watching the recordings of past Q&A webinars on the Work Camper News YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash work camper and click on the Q&A on work camping playlist. James and Tina McCoy are originally from Pennsylvania, where James served as a pastor for 27 years, working with youth and in organizing missions and local outreach programs. Life was grand for them until COVID hit and put an end to all public gatherings in super strict Pennsylvania. So the couple sold everything they had or gave it to their three children. Then they bought a truck and fifth wheel and hit the road looking for adventure. They were retiring a bit earlier than they had expected. However, Tina discovered the Work Camper website and saw there were lots of jobs available for people who still wanted to or needed to work. Since then, the McCoys have worked at Glacier National Park and Grand Canyon National Park. James also worked as a non-medical transportation driver, and Tina started a 31 business selling gifts and fashion accessories. One of their favorite jobs has been working on the trams at Dollywood Amusement Park in Tennessee, James serves as a driver, and Tina works as a conductor, making sure everyone is on the tram. She also points out things to guests as the tram moves along. The couple has been enjoying some wonderful perks on their journey. The free RV sites are nice, but the ability to see bears while working brought them a different type of enjoyment. They have access to a free clinic at Dollywood, and they also get free admission to a lot of shows and attractions. They discovered that work camping for companies like Zantara Corporation opens the door to multiple work camping opportunities in different states. The biggest perk for them is the flexibility to travel wherever they want to go and to make adjustments to their itinerary on the fly in order to take care of family emergencies that may arise. To tell us more about their work camping and RVing experiences, please welcome James and Tina McCoy to the show. Thanks for joining me today, James and Tina. I really appreciate the time. So tell us a little bit about yourselves and how you got involved in RVing. I was a pastor for 27 years and I was in one church for three and a half years. And I was in my longest church for, or in Pennsylvania for 23 years. I was a youth pastor and missions and outreach. When COVID hit, all that changed because Pennsylvania was really strict. They shut a lot of things down. I couldn't do any outreach. I couldn't go out in the community. And they put me in charge of COVID protocol, which was really a drag. And I got burnt out and got really stressed out over it and just really had an emotional meltdown. Tina and I decided that we literally sold everything we owned, bought a truck, bought a fifth wheel, and we headed out on the road. And our kids came and got everything they wanted from the house. It was like we were dead and gone. And Tina took care of most, I mean, we did a little bit of research, but we did all this in the midst of COVID in a matter of eight months, sure. October, November, December, five months. Yeah. How did and you discover we, work? Uh, that's <laughs> Tina and that's Tina's thing. I just got on a website called Work Ampers and we knew we were planning on getting an RV in retirement. It was just happened to be a little bit earlier than what we had expected. And so, yeah, I looked on this Work Ampers website and found all 
the different jobs that were available to people. So we still have to work. We're not, we are not retirement age and I haven't tapped into any of my 401k stuff. So we still work to survive, but we don't have to work too much. We, we live pretty simple. What kind of jobs have you worked? Our first jobs were in Montana at the Glacier National Park. We lived on the east side of Glacier National Park, outside of Bab and, and St. Mary's, Montana. Beautiful place. It's not very commercialized. If you go over there, you're really out in the woods. Uh, we actually lived on the Blackfeet Indian Reservation, and I drove a trash truck. I picked up trash on the e whole east side of the park. I drove the east side of the park every day, and it, it was just phenomenal. I loved it there. You got to see bears. He came and told me all his wildlife stories uh, every I, day. Yeah, bears try to get in the truck, the trash truck, but park very long. And then, so I did that, and Tina worked in uh, retail, in a retail store. I worked at the camp store, Rising Sun Camp Store in St. Mary's area. And we worked for a company called Vantera. They handle, they do all the hotels and stores and restaurants inside the park, in, inside a lot of the parks out west, actually. It's a beautiful park. I know that I went up there to celebrate my 60th birthday. So that would have been in 2020 in the middle of all the COVID stuff. And there was still a camp store open, but the east entrance was closed, if I recall. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it was because the Blackfeet Indian have the rights to open or close that. And you have to go through Browning to get there. And Browning was shut down. It was a ghost town during that time. Very good. And what did you like most about being in Glacier National Park? Wow. The mountains and the solitude and just being burnt out the way I was. I really needed some downtime. And that really gave it to me. And so the mountains, the hikes, the glaciers, the people we work with are great too. The people we worked for were great. My boss was great. It just, and a lot of other work campers, a lot of other seasonal workers that were just doing the same thing we were doing. I would imagine that would be a very fun place to work, but is it cold up there? It does in the wintertime. It gets cold in the summer. It's just the highs are like 80, 90, no humidity. The last time we were there, we got eight inches of snow in the middle of June. Uh, inches of snow in June. Yeah. When I got there and the year before that, they had three foot snow drifts outside Mini Glacier Hotel. And we had to move snow so I could get into the bear room because all of the trash is secured in bear rooms or bear box kind of stuff. And so, yeah, it's really nice. That's what I like about it. Winter's my favorite time of the year. Hiking aspect of it. I drug my husband oh, on. I worked him up until we finally went to the Grinnell Glacier. We actually went. Oh to a glacier and just the turquoise, beautiful water, but it was a team mile hike. We told me it was six. I told, no, I told him we, we could go all day. We could take our time and go slow, but it was a 3000 feet elevation, but it was, we got to the top and there were rams up at the top and the glacier water was beautiful. And we just took our time, but yeah, he says now that I about tried to kill him. What other kinds of jobs have you worked? That, that first year we did, I did trash and she did the retail. The next summer I started out in trash and then, but I switched to security. I did security there and she stayed in retail. And then one, we went to Williams, Arizona and I did in security Grand in Grand Canyon. I did security mm -hmm. there. I actually was going to try out for an acting position on the train. They do that. The Polar Express. Express. But I decided not to. And I went ahead and took security job there and, and Tina worked in retail. Thanks. We worked. Stayed at our daughter's house. It's really, really work camping. But in the winters, I would we'd stay at our daughter's house, park in her driveway. And I did some non-medical emergency transport kind of stuff. I was driving. And I did my 31 kind of uh, side gig on the side. And my daughter's 80-year-old neighbor had just lost her husband to COVID. So I would go over her house on a weekly basis and have a Bible study with her, but it ended up that we would call and talk to each other every day. I think she was really lonely and trying to cope with life without her husband. So we were there at a, what we call a God moment. It was just an opportune time for us to be able to be there. And, and across the street, a God brought a pastor into my life that had been down the same road I've been down. And so we clicked who we're still friends with him. And he actually was here a couple of weeks ago, visiting Dollywood and and then we came here at some point, uh, my dad had a heart attack and we went and took care of him. We went and saw my daughter 
We went to New Mexico and visited some friends. And then we started working here, working on the trams. What year was that? Was October of last year? Uh, yeah, November. We started, November. we got here in October. I drive and my wife conducts from the back. That's interesting that yeah, you're both a, working on the same tram. And that's at yeah, Dollywood, yeah. right? There are actually seven married couples that work out in our on our team. You know, many of us are either post retirement or full time RVers, or in some way have made that transition. Hey, we're not going to work that grind all of our lives. We're going to have some fun. And have you faced any challenges while you've been on the road? Oh my! How long is this podcast? <laughs> the tire was probably. The uh, we had three flat tires when we left Montana. We got maybe forty miles down the road, had a blowout, put the spare on. Got another 300 miles down the road, had a flat. Oh. And Dina actually saw them when we were stopped. Got down a little bit further, had another flat. We have some friends in Montana we stayed with. I bought another tire. That's one of our biggest challenges. <laughs> but I mean, it was actually, it was not that big a deal. We just had fun with it and rolled with the changes. And He's, he's good with uh, doing things with his hands. He was able to get that, uh, what's that? And she gives the jack. The jack. It was a powered one, though. And he no, just lifted a hydraulic up a 16,000 pound RV and got underneath there. And the Facebook groups that we're on, I, people ask, what's one thing they need to know? I said, you need to be somewhat mechanically inclined and have be able to problem solve because there's all kinds of stuff that can go wrong with one of these RVs. One of the, the first thing that happened was our landing gear, our leveling system That's went right. out That's in our first month. And so, after we left Jessica's, After we left Jessica's house, we were in Chattanooga, Chattanooga mm -hmm. and Camping World fixed it for a little while, but we got it back <laughs> and it broke again. So I called the manufacturer, Lippert, and I was on the phone with them. They were great. I was on the phone with them for three hours, troubleshooting the thing. I got my voltmeter out. We were testing this, testing that, and we just figured it out over the phone and we haven't had a problem since. And through that process- It was a little $10 relay- that was An not auto set relay. Yeah. yeah. And got it fixed. And through that process, I know a lot about the eleven system now. If it happens again, I know what to do. On this Thank no you. major issues. I oh I don't know if I want to say this publicly, but I have came into a Bucky's a month ago, two months ago, and I got off the road. When you're driving a long distance, I forget I'm towing something because our truck really does a good job with it. And I turned into the Bucky's and I brushed one of the poles as uh -oh. I turned into yeah. And I always, when I kept pulling in somewhere, I, I had my window down. So I heard it. And I stopped real quick. But there's a guy that works with us at Dollywood that his whole career has been repairing RVs. So he's helping us out with this, helping us get the parts and things like that. It's like a door. It's yeah, a one door of our door. doors that need to be replaced. Did you always know how to fix RVs or did you take special <laughs> training? Oh, no. Uh, I've always been pretty good with my hands and minor maintenance stuff. As When I was a pastor, I was supervisor of maintenance and custodial staff. I was over our, our uh, properties committee, like projects and things like that. So it's always been, I was a mechanic for a while before I was a pastor. And so just having some of that background, because if you don't have some of that, you got to call people in to fix stuff and it's very expensive. There's this big guy here, RV that came over and helped us. We had a cable that broke right before we were getting ready to leave last January. And it's pretty inexpensive when he, yeah, he did over he, I, Yeah, he did it. Got us a good deal. And yeah, he, he did it for probably yeah. half price of what other companies. That was our on. first time actually having to have to call somebody. Yeah. And that's in two years and eight months. So it's not too bad. What are some of the perks you've been able to enjoy? You've been RVing and work camping. Uh, I would say well, in Montana was just the fact of the mountains. And free RV sites and wildlife. Bears on the way uh, to work. Yeah. And I enjoy traveling into the Blackfeet Indian mm -hmm. Reservation and at convenience stores and things like visiting with some of the locals and some of the Native Americans there was a lot of fun. Here at Dollywood, the perks are endless. Medical care. They have their own medical clinic. They give us lunches. All that we can get in many of the places in the town for free. Like, a lot of the shows and the different go kart rides, and the keys uh, we yeah. can get in. and yeah, and in other states we can get into a lot of different places, hundreds of places. And that's the thing with being in Zan being with the Zantera Corporation as well. We can transfer to any of their locations. We're in the system. 
say we want to go work at the Grand Canyon. We can just say, hey, we're already in the system. Here's what we want to do. Zantera operates uh, a number of uh, Yellowstone, Mount Rushmore, Mount Rushmore Grand Canyon, uh, uh, Rocky Mountain National Death Park, Park. Uh, the one with the Hoodies. Death Valley. Oh, um, Zion too. Yeah. And uh, that's a park. They know us and uh, we can travel and go where we want and have a, a job. And I guess the, another perk is just being out and about not being tied down to one place. Like when my dad had his heart attack, we were able to take a leave of absence and go stay there for a uh, month and be sure he was taken care of. My mom has passed away, but be sure he was taken care of. And we have a friend there that's that's a nice property. He let us park on it for free and he actually put in a 50 amp outlet for us so we could hook up. And the previous year we were in his yard, we had to do two one tens and hook up yeah. like two different locations and it, one in his Somewhere. house and one in his garage. So that kind of made it work. But those are some of the perks, I guess, other than just the financial stuff and the free RV side. Now we don't get a, a Dollywood here gives us a stipend. And so it covers almost all of our RV fees. That's very helpful. We got portable RV park. Yeah. We stay in an RV park that doesn't have a lot of amenities. It's a lot of older folks and not a lot of kids. They got a small pool shower house and laundry. And so there's not a lot of kids around. It's pretty quiet. And we like that where our friends, the gills, they work and live over in Claybos and they've got three pools, a lazy river. It's all heated. They got a bounce thing. They got lots of things for family. So it's a lot busier over there than here. Are you going to stay within the Zendera family when this position ends? Or are you going to try and find a job somewhere else? Oh, we don't know. We could stay at Dollywood for a long time. We really like the people we work with. A lot of believers, we are free to talk about Jesus on the trams. Oftentimes we, we get in co God conversations and as a pastor, I have more God conversations on the road than I probably did in church. And when we left CNT, we had decided country in town, CNT. With people that don't know God. With people that don't know God. But I, we meet a lot of people. So I used to go to church, so it's nice to have conversations with people. So that's not their fault. It's, it's not your fault, but here's what church should be. And just lots of conversations with people about what the Christian life should look like. I have had a lot of conversations. Well, I, one of my coworkers in the first job was a transgender young man. I say young, he was 42. He was a man. And he wanted to be a woman. And he knew I was a pastor. I told him what I thought about it. But we worked alongside of him. I did. And I loved him, cared for him. I, I wasn't going to call it by his female name. I never used the feminine pronouns with him. But he had an issue one day with a coworker, And he came to me. Early in the morning, banging on our Yeah, camera. banging on the door. Early morning. Because he knew I was the pastor and he could trust me. He came in and we prayed and talked about it and, and worked it out. But he knew I didn't agree with his lifestyle. But I try to love on people and meet them where they are and let the Holy Spirit do the work in life. I'm, I don't, I can't play the Holy Spirit and change people. And our culture today, when it comes to church, is really a mess. And so one of our goals is to find people and meet them where they are and love them where they are and let the Holy Spirit work through us to change their lives and help them. We had a, things like we had another, we had another gay couple that was camped next to us. And we got a chance to sit on the fire. And I think they were amazed that a pastor would invite them over to have s'mores. We invited them over to have s'mores and talk with them and visit with them and hear their story and just met them where they were and then let them know that we love them, God loves them, and seek what Jesus wants you to do with your life. And they were really amazed that this pastor would sit down and break bread with them. But also we shared some of our struggles and our hard yeah. our time. We were just real with them. That's great. Are there any other places on your bucket list that you'd like to travel? Oh, I've got a bigger bucket God. list than he does. When we bought this thing, I said, this is the last home I'm buying. I'm going to die in this thing. Mm -hmm. I'm 61. Tina's 54. Yes. 54. And so our ultimate long-term goal would be find some land somewhere, park this, build a shelter over it, hook it up to plumbing and electric and live our days out somewhere in the woods. Now, in a more temperate place like Tennessee, where we yeah. could survive the winters and, and the summers both. Tina likes to travel, and I'm sure she's got lots of places she'd like to go, so I'll let her tell her bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to go down the Oregon coast into California, but you know about gas prices over there in California. It's pretty expensive, and 
So we need to, my husband is actually planning on most likely getting a social security next year. So that will free us up to do a little bit more than what we can do this year. Next July, he'll be able to do that. So we'd like to, but he's getting, he's wanting to more settle down. And so we're just praying about what God has next. I, you know, I tell people we live simply so others can simply live. We don't have a, a lavish life. We have a nice truck and a nice dip wheel, but other than that, we don't need a lot to survive. How long do you plan to be at Dollywood? So God tells us to leave. That's the, that's the preacher answer in me. We don't know. We don't. We just, that's one thing that's cool about this lifestyle is that you can just play it by ear and see what happens next. How's my dad going to be doing in the next year? We can go stay there again for a while. We'll take care of him. Uh, I got our kids need us. We can just pick up and go there and find a job. That's, we have a. We have, we are hoping to stay here through January 6th is when the park yeah, well, closes. Christmas is here really fun. And I like the weather and not too cold here, Patina, and it's not too warm. So we're, we're probably going to stay here through at least Christmas. Unless. Unless God has different plans. <laughs> Which happened to us already this year. So we yeah. started working here in March and. We left a month later in April and then came back a month later in, a in May. We were able to do that. That's a fun story. If you had to start over again, is there anything you'd be doing differently? I'd, I would have done it earlier in life. I, if I knew that I could do what I'm doing now and survive and, and share Christ as we travel, I would have done it a couple of years early, earlier than what we did. Oh, no, we did. James uh, had a story. His stories a little bit. He spent 10 years addicted to drugs and alcohol because four, four years ago, 30, a long time ago, but he impacted a lot of teenagers, was able to, they weren't able to fool him and was able to do a whole lot in youth ministry. And he gave a whole lot, I guess, looking back, the last five years of ministry was hard. James did have some depression and anxiety and things did get harder for him to cope with. So that's when we were. And then, of course, COVID hit. So we did end up at that point saying, let's just do something different. Like, we don't have to do this. So this is a much less stressful life for us right now. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah. Do you have any advice you would give to people who are interested in the work camping lifestyle or jumping into the RV lifestyle? Do your homework, do your research, maybe get a small camper. You could actually rent one, go out for a weekend, see if it's something you want to do. You have to do it, deal with your water, your sewer. Some people don't like the fact of having to take care of your own septic tank. It's on board. Carry that around with you. It's there. You got to know how to empty it. Just do your research before you buy something. I wouldn't go deep in debt, but I would say just do your research and realize what this lifestyle is. Because it's a different lifestyle. It is. You've got to want to do it. And you've got to understand the ins and outs of some things. Be sure you like to travel and drive. We have a 40 foot, yeah, 40, well, almost 41 foot Montana high country that I pull. Fifth wheel. Fifth wheel. But you're comfortable doing that, hooking, just. And if you're a Christian, pray about it. If you're not a Christian, uh, send us an email. I can tell you how to become a Christian. We have a little Facebook pa page called Nomads of the Way. And we have an email, nomadsoftheway at gmail.com that we use for different things. My wife puts out prayer things and we have some, we still have friends from our past ministry at church that still are around and still check on us. And I still have people calling and asking advice. Is that uh, how you'd like people to connect with you is to nomads of the way? Yeah. Nomads of the way at gmail.com. And it's nomads, meaning we roll around of the way, meaning the way of Christ. Uh -huh. Nomads of the way, all lowercase, no capitals, no spaces. Where are you from originally? I'm from Missouri. Grew up in a little town, Sedalia, home of Scott Joplin and Ragtime and Missouri State Fair. And my wife, Tina, grew up in uh, Illinois, north of Chicago. We met in college at Southwest Baptist University and then went to seminary in Fort Worth. And then we Southwestern. were Southwestern Baptist University Seminary and then did ministry for 20 plus years. 27. 27. Mm -hmm. Here we are. Like my wife said earlier, I did spend my young adult years in teenage years as an alcoholic and addict. I sobered up in 1988 and gave my life to Christ and started ministry right then. I love that story. So I really appreciate you telling your, sharing your story with us today. It sounds like you've got quite the adventure while you've been work camping and RVing and you're touching a lot <laughs> yeah, of lives. Like so I really appreciate you sharing that with me and I wish you the best of luck going forward. 
Thank, thank, you, for, you. Uh, thank you. And if anybody wants to email us, feel free to email us. I enjoyed speaking with James and Tina McCoy about their work camping experiences and the places they've enjoyed visiting during their RVing adventure. The McCoys have faced some challenges while RVing, like the time when they experienced three flat tires in one day over the course of 300 miles. James worked as a mechanic for a while before going into ministry, but he said it helps to be somewhat mechanically inclined with the ability to do some problem solving while RVing. Without that knowledge, RVing can be expensive because people will need to rely on mechanics to address frequent repairs. James said he has had more conversations about faith with people on the road than he ever expected. He outlined several opportunities where he and Tina could meet people wherever they were on their faith journey, love on them, share their stories, and answer their questions. The McCoys still have a lot of things on their bucket lists which they'd like to accomplish before finding land in a temperate climate to develop a new home base. Jim and Tina don't live a lavish life, but they realize they don't need a lot of things to be truly happy. For now, they are content to spend the Christmas season at Dollywood, but they remain open to new adventures. To connect with the McCoys, email them at nomadsoftheway at gmail.com or check out the Nomads of the Way Facebook group. Today's episode is sponsored by WorkCamper News. With its diamond and platinum membership tools, WorkCamper News is much more than just a job listing website. When you put the tools of this professional service into action, you'll find out just how easy it can be to turn your work camping dreams into reality. The one-year memberships open the door to a one-stop shop for all things work camping. Being the original resource for work camping, you'll find the largest number of job listings, be able to connect with the community of work campers, and view resources compiled by experts who've been enjoying the RV lifestyle for many years. If you're serious about leading a successful and enjoyable work camping lifestyle, then a diamond or platinum membership is for you. You can even get started with a free 30-day trial by visiting workcamper.com forward slash trial. Embark on new adventures today with the support of Work Camper News behind you. That's all I have for today's show. Next week, I'll be speaking with the CEO of a company which specializes in creating innovative living and working spaces in RVs, especially vintage Airstream travel trailers. I'll have that interview on the next episode of The Work Camper Show. Thanks for listening.